Engines such as this one in London's Science Museum powered the Industrial Revolution and left the country with a remarkable manufacturing heritage. But now a skills shortage in this sector is part of a wider problem the UK is facing. The number of vacancies for which businesses cannot find people with the right skills has reached pre-recession levels, threatening to hold back the pace of recovery in parts of the economy. Manufacturing, and especially engineering, is among the worst hit sectors. Engineering and manufacturing skill shortages are rife. Uh, we find that manufacturing as an industry has the highest number of hard to fill vacancies. We've also found four in five of our member companies are currently experiencing recruitment difficulties and two thirds of those say because candidates are lacking technical skills. The government has introduced apprenticeship programmes aimed at replacing engineers and technicians who are retiring. The business secretary is trying to encourage employers by putting more of the government's training budgets in employers' hands. Skill shortage is a massively serious problem and it potentially could disrupt the recovery unless we get this right. We're trying to deal with a whole variety of issues at different levels of the pipeline. Uh, you know, we need young people to take up engineering as a career, and that, particularly young women. We do spectacularly badly at the moment, so it's encouraging school children to take up the basic disciplines like maths and physics. Uh, we need to encourage apprenticeships in engineering and we're putting a lot of money into advanced apprenticeships uh, and also into specialist institutions around the new nuclear industry, uh, around HS2 and all the specific engineering skills that go with that. But there aren't any urgent solutions, unfortunately, to, to encourage a young person to take up an engineering career starts at 10 or 11 or 12 at school. Um, and it takes a decade or more to produce a professional engineer at the end of it. So it's a long-term process turning this around, but the problems are urgent. But companies have mixed views about how effective the government's actions have been and believe more should be done. I think the apprenticeship scheme is superb, but there's more they need to do. It can't be done in two years, it can't be done in five years, it's got to be done over the next 20 years. But there is commitment there, and what they are doing is positive, but there is more they can do they can do more to promote this career choice. They can do more to get businesses engaged with schools. They can do more to encourage the general population of the UK to, to, to see what this career is and what fun it could be. Birth on Boats in Hampshire, southern England, has taken matters into its own hands by training several apprentices a year to help the business grow during the economic crisis. Uh, we currently have 30 apprentices in our business. Uh, we take on about 10 a year and it's a four-year course. So if we can't get the full 10, we'll be eight and sometimes um, we'll be 12. We can grow the business on the back of the apprentice training. What happens is that you are able, you're confident to be able to bid for bigger contracts knowing that you've got the workforce to accommodate the growth in the business um, and, and, and that's very, very important. We've doubled the size of the boatyard in the last five years or so during the recession and we've been able to do that largely because of the apprentice training programme. The government is encouraging more companies to train apprentices as part of its effort to rebalance the economy so more people will be making things again instead of having so many jobs dependent on service sectors such as finance. But if Britain cannot tackle its skills shortage problem the danger is, it simply won't happen. Brian Groom, Financial Times, Hampshire.